everybody, what's up? I'm Emily and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about sex and dating with an ostomy. This is something that I looked up literally the minute I got home. Not that I was wanting to have sex or wanting to date, but um... I mean, it's something that crosses your mind, especially as a 22-year-old with an ostomy. Once again, for those of you who don't know what an ostomy is, an ostomy is a surgical procedure that, for me, in my case, I had to have my entire colon removed, and when that happens, they have to reroute your intestines. When you no longer have a colon or a rectum, you cannot poop out your butt. So they have to reroute your intestines out your stomach, and you have what is called an ostomy bag. Obviously, a bag of poop doesn't lend itself to the hookup colon culture of today. So I'm going to break it down for you guys and give you guys a little bit of insight into sex and dating with an ostomy as a 22 year old. I just want to say that this video is going to be talking about mature things, drinking, sex, dating, things that happen as an adult. I know that a lot of you guys who watch my videos are young, so I just want to let you guys know that this is definitely an adult video. Oh, I really just want to chit chat with you guys about it. I'm not going to be giving like tips or anything. I just kind of want to let you know my experience. So I had just gotten out of a five and a half year relationship when I got my ostomy. So I was not only new to dating with an ostomy, but I was just new to dating in general. Um, I forgot how to flirt. I had no game. I was really self-conscious. And now I have this bag of poop attached to me with my intestines on the outside of my body. It doesn't really, like I said, lend itself to the hookup culture of college students today. So I was really, really nervous. So the first thing that I did, I'm just going to tell you my experience. This doesn't have to apply to everybody. But um, what I did is there's a site called Bumble. It's similar to Tinder, except I think that everybody knows now that Tinder has definitely more of a hookup motive, whereas Bumble is more about we may be interested in dating and entering into a relationship together type of thing versus like, I just want to have sex with you. So I got on Bumble, to be quite honest with you, as a confidence boost. I wanted to go on there because guys tell you that you're pretty and it feels nice. And I could kind of be anonymous on there. Um, on Bumble, they don't know your last name. All they know is the info that you choose to put and the photos you choose to put and your first name. So nobody could Google me or look up my Facebook and see that I had an ostomy bag. So I kind of controlled that right off the bat. So the first person that I ever talked to on Bumble post like ostomy surgery was this guy named Chad and I don't remember how I brought it up um, but I had just told him that I had an ostomy and he said, oh, did you have Crohn's disease? And I said, and it kind of made me feel good that he knew kind of what led to an ostomy, although mine was ulcerative colitis, not Crohn's. It made me feel good. So then he kind of just said, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. I have a friend with, I have a friend with Crohn's disease who's had parts of his colon removed, yada, yada, yada. And then we moved on. He, I mean, really, it didn't affect how he saw me, although we had never met in person. We never ended up meeting in person. Um, but then actually I had met Graham, my ex-boyfriend now. We were together for six, almost seven months. Um, and he had asked me if I, so we started messaging back and forth on Bumble, and then he said, hey, this weekend, what are you doing? Um, do you want to go grab drinks? And I said, I'd love, like, to go out. I'll be honest, I can't drink right now um, because I recently had surgery, but I'd love to go on a date with you. And he was like, oh, if you don't mind me asking, what did you have surgery on? And literally my response was, um... I had to have my colon removed. I know it sounds really serious, and it kind of was, but things are okay now, and it's totally cool. I have found that not just in dating life, but in, um, I guess just normal social life, it's the, what am I trying to say? The attitude that you have about your ostomy or anything for that matter, if you, you know, are self-conscious about your body or you have hair loss or acne or whatever, the attitude that you have towards something that you're insecure about, even if you're faking it, um, other people will pick up and kind of mimic that same 
attitude. And so for anybody who I've met where I've just been like, yeah, I had an ostomy, what happened was really traumatic, um, but I'm okay now and I don't mind having an ostomy, yada, 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 people are like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. And they kind of mimic, but I have noticed in situations where I've talked negatively about my ostomy, people have also responded negatively. Um, so I think that that's just kind of interesting and a really good tip for anybody, not just young people, not just dating, but the attitude that you have towards your ostomy is how people are going to perceive it, especially since a lot of people that you talk to about an ostomy, it's their first encounter, possibly even knowing about an ostomy, but second of all, meeting somebody with it. And so I think it's really important just to kind of put out a positive, even if you're totally faking it, a positive stigma surrounding ostomies. So then um, Graham and I went on our first date and I was really self-conscious about the bag. I just didn't want to look at it. It does make noise because, I mean, you're literally pooping out of your stomach. So... It does make noise and I was really nervous for that. It's literally like farting on the first date. And for normal women, you get to hold in your farts the whole date or until you go to the bathroom or whatever. But in this case, I couldn't. Um, but actually what was really nice is he came, and I'm sure that not every instance is like this, but he came to our first date um, with questions and like was like, oh, I looked up what an ostomy is and whatever. I don't think I told him that I had an ostomy. I think I just said I had my colon removed and was hoping somehow he would find out that that meant I had a bag. And he was really like interested in it. He did ask me on our first date about like what happened. And here's my thing. Even going forward into dating now, it's hard for me because... I don't have a problem sharing my story, obviously, and I don't have a problem talking about how very traumatic it was. The issue is that the mood has to be right. I'm not going to sit here on our first date enjoying Mexican food and telling you how I almost died. And at that point, I hadn't gone through the second half or the second and third surgery yet. So I hadn't even experienced all that trauma. So at this point, I just feel like I want to be careful with who I tell in the dating world. Especially now, all I have are scars. So they don't know what these are from. Um, and so I just want to be careful with who I share that with because it is so personal and it does emotionally affect me every single time I share my story or talk about it um, and kind of go back to those memories. The other thing is that Nobody is going to understand, unless you were there with me, how horrific everything was and how truly traumatizing things were. So that's going to also be something hard going into the dating world from here on out, is that my partner may never understand what I truly went through. And I think I'm going to have to accept that at some point, that they're just never going to understand. So now let's get into sex with an ostomy, which is, I know why you all are here. So... Sex with an ostomy is no different than sex without an ostomy as far as the anatomy is concerned. Yes, there is risk for sexual dysfunction, more so in men than women, um, because the women is more of a fertility risk than a sexual pleasure risk, um, or I guess sexual function risk, um, because for women, our fallopian tubes and uterus kind of get pushed around in the shuffle of surgery. And obviously men, their whole reproductive system is on the outside of their body. So for them, it's not as big of a deal. But the prostate is in that area and their bladder, which obviously directly affects their penis. And so that can kind of um, affect them that way. So the first time Graham and I... <sighs> the first time I had sex with an ostomy, one... I don't really know how to say this because... It wasn't bad, but I didn't enjoy it. I wanted to have sex with him, but I hated the fact that I was feeling so self-conscious about my bag. Literally, that was all that was on my mind was my bag and what is he thinking about it and all of this stuff. And for women, it's really hard to have, at least for me and other women I've talked to, it's really hard to have sex if your mind isn't in it. Like, I can't, like, women have to be relaxed and in the mood and in the moment to have sex and to enjoy it. And, which I'm sure men, it's similar, but I just, my mind was somewhere else and I wasn't enjoying it. I was really self-conscious and then I even cried afterwards because 
there was blood everywhere, which I don't want to scare you guys who are having sex for the first time after your ostomy surgery, but my surgeon did tell me that this was going to be normal because your vaginal canal and your uterus is supported by your rectum. Now that that has been moved, it can kind of tilt, and, which can cause a little bit of bleeding once something is inserted, you know, once you're having intercourse. And so I kind of knew that that could happen, but then once it was there, and I really like this new guy, we've just started dating, and, you know, we're kind of not only exploring who we are personally, but then sexually as well. And this was really the first person, I guess, since my five and a half year breakup that I had really been with sexually. And so I just was nervous for it all. So the one thing that I will say is that your attitude, once again, totally reflects. If you choose to have sex with the lights off because you're feeling uncomfortable, which I totally get, um, I definitely was nervous about him, not even, not only like in a sexual context, but just in a normal everyday context, seeing me naked or even shirtless with, with my bag. I just, didn't like it. it. I felt really uncomfortable. And so that was kind of an issue. So turning off the light really helps. You can also wear, they make like ostomy sexual like garments, like they're kind of lacy and they kind of wrap around you and that works. You can also wear, I'm not into it, um, but you can also wear a t-shirt. Normal people, normal people, people without ostomies, have sex with shirts on. Like, it's totally fine. You can also just wear lingerie that kind of camouflages the bag. I would also maybe recommend, um, if you're new to dating, getting smaller bags. So if you're gonna go on a date where you know it's gonna lead to sex, put on just a little bit smaller of a bag, maybe the seven inches versus the 12 or the nine that people normally use. The seven inches are really small. And those kind of sit up higher, so, I'm kind of treading here as far as how much I want to share, but one of the things I was really nervous about is oral sex, receiving oral sex, because, you know, girls kind of feel self-conscious about how we taste and smell down there as it is, but now you've got a bag of poop in that same general area, and so I was really nervous about what that was going to be like down there, but just from what this sounds so bad what i've heard it's not an issue so what i would recommend is you're gonna know when you're gonna have sex it's not like it just springs on you and you're like oh what i'm so surprised i mean it does take away a little bit of spontaneous sex a little bit like he couldn't just spring he or she couldn't just spring on you in the kitchen without any warning because your bag might be full and you may need to empty it. Um, so I, my suggestion, what I did is if I knew that we were going to be having sex, I would just go and empty my bag and keep it empty, you know, kind of go and empty it a little bit more regular than, than normal. Cause obviously you don't want to be having sex with a bag full of poop. You know, it just, one, it can pull and kind of be funny. Second of all, it's, it's not cute at all. Um, so the other thing that I will say is that I was curious about like sex positions and what it was going to feel like now that things had shifted. So it didn't ever hurt. It just felt like a lot of pressure sometimes, especially in different positions. Um, I could feel more pressure even now. Um, now that my J pouch is there, I feel more of like an intense pressure and like fullness than I do like a stabbing pain like something is wrong. I don't want to say that an ostomy ruined my sex life while I had the ostomy, but it's definitely more enjoyable for me now that I don't have an ostomy, if that makes sense. Other, besides just the fact that an ostomy is, I had fresh wounds, I was dealing with the change of my body, and I was really self-conscious, which I've never really struggled with body image issues. like. There have been times when I didn't love the way my body looked, but I was never super insecure. And I just, for the first time, I really hated the way that I looked naked. And so that was also part of it in sex too. Not even just the ostomy aspect, but just I hated the way I looked, which I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that, you know, confidence in the bedroom 
only benefits your sex life. And so, you know, when you're insecure, it definitely can affect things in a negative way. So now that I am dating without an ostomy, I guess I would say that my biggest concern is, like I said, that somebody isn't going to realize how heavy this is in my life. Especially now in 2018, I'm going to be celebrating anniversaries of these things. You know, my colon removal was on February 20th. Um, my J pouch was formed on January 3rd. And then those eight weeks that followed are very traumatic. And then my takedown on August 28th. And so this whole year is just going to be kind of reliving that one year since. And so if I'm with somebody at that time, I just, I worry that they aren't going to know why it's affecting me so heavily, which is kind of why I'm glad I have these videos. Um, not only that are informative for you guys and kind of give you guys a perspective, but also give me a chance to look back on how I felt in that moment. Because how I feel about dating and sex now with an ostomy or with a J-pouch now may not be how I feel in five years. And so it's kind of interesting to see um, my response at this point in my journey. Somebody also asked me, would you date somebody now that you're on the other side with an ostomy bag? And here's my answer. And I want you to hear me out. No, I wouldn't purely because not because I'm not attracted to people with a bag and I do think it would depend I could meet somebody and fall in love with them and they could have a bag the reason that I wouldn't is because it brings a lot of emotional struggle in the relationship and while yes I could help that person through the emotional struggle because I've obviously been there it just really puts pressure on a relationship. Mine and Graham's relationship was pushed to the test because of all of these things. And our relationship was very new when I needed to lean on him really heavily. And so I don't know if I would want that again in a relationship. Um, now we may see, I might meet somebody with an ostomy and it doesn't affect me. But as of right now, I think just because of an emotional standpoint, I wouldn't want to date somebody with an ostomy. So I think that that's everything. I know that that was kind of hodgepodge and not really like uniform and it was really just me chatting about sex and dating with an ostomy but if you guys would like a part two to this video because I know that a lot of people look up these videos because I did I read a ton of forums um I would love for you to leave comments down below with questions a lot of you have asked questions on videos and been like oh I feel like this is inappropriate no literally no question as long as it's politely asked um is not out of bounds. I'm really open to answering any questions. So leave any sex and dating questions down below, either with an ostomy, without an ostomy, or um, just plain questions you guys have to, that you guys want answered, whether in the comments or on a separate video. I really love, you know, kind of helping you guys. This has been really fun for me to get back, not only get back into YouTube, but to help other people as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. I seriously love you guys so much. I never understood why YouTubers said that all the time, but seriously, I love that your love and support, and I just, I love my subscribers so much. You guys are amazing. So don't, if you aren't subscribed, please do. We're so close to 16,000. And I think once we get to 20,000, I might do a giveaway. So that would be so fun. Hopefully by Christmas, we can get to 20,000 so that I can do a Christmas giveaway. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.